delay comes at a price. The delays of the Vulcan Centaur rocket made United Launch Alliance suffer that literally. No longer a gentle reminder letter, the U.S. Air Force is imposing financial penalties on the ULA. However, behind this scandal, there are many hidden matters. Should only ULA be subject to this punishment? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. The U.S. Air Force is imposing financial penalties on United Launch Alliance over delays in two military satellite launches this year. Although declined to disclose the amount of the postponement fees, the Air Force said they are assessed based on a variety of factors, including the duration of the schedule slip. More importantly, they are in accordance with the terms of the contract between two parties. According to the National Security Space Launch NSSL Phase II contract, ULA initially assigned USS F-51 and USS F-106 scheduled for launch in the second quarter of fiscal year 2022 and fourth quarter of fiscal year 22, respectively. However, ultimately, the USS F-51 mission moved off of Vulcan and onto an Atlas V rocket. It is scheduled no earlier than June 2024. The USS F-106 mission remains manifested on a Vulcan as that rocket's first national security mission, but its launch date is uncertain. In addition to those missions, there are two Vulcan missions planned to launch in 2024. The Alliance's first national security space launch was supposed to be of a new navigation satellite in January. Instead, due to the delays, we have worked with ULA to launch in October, the Air Force said. The launch of a seventh new GPS-3 satellite slated for June was rescheduled for January 2025. In the letter that Frank Calvelli, the Pentagon official, sent to ULA's co-owners in mid-May, he wrote currently there is military satellite capability sitting on the ground due to Vulcan delays. ULA has a backlog of 25 National Security Space Launch Phase II Vulcan launches on contract. Of course, these launches take place only if the Space Force certifies Vulcan for high-value national security missions, which can only happen after the second test flight or CERT-2 of the Vulcan rocket. After the successful debut in January, ULA targeted the CERT-2 launch date before October 1. But it's weird that CERT-2's payload Sierra Space Dream Chaser spacecraft is expected to fly in the fourth quarter. Due to the conflict in the timeline between the two parties, the Pentagon is considering allowing Vulcan to carry a mass simulator in the next test if its space plane is not ready by year's end. In the better scenario, I'm pretty sure that no matter how long Dream delays, ULA will still be able to launch the rocket with ballast on top much earlier than the expected October date. Why can I be so sure? Remember that ULA once said that rocket hardware for the second Vulcan launch will be ready to fly in mid-2024. Obviously, before imposing financial penalties, the Pentagon did all they could to pull the schedule to where it needed to be and make sure ULA kept up with the timeline. However, somehow, ULA still failed to obey the rules. In evidence, the company seems to be caught off guard. We are not aware of any significant delays concerning Space Force missions. Asked about the penalty, the firm said in a statement that it will support our Space Force customers' launches on Vulcan as soon as their spacecraft become available. It has no doubt the affair this time made us confused a lot. The matter is that they had a Vulcan ready, but they were waiting for Dream Chaser to be ready. Tori Bruno posted what was supposedly the next Vulcan getting engines on April 17. But while they could launch something else, including the very popular concrete mass simulator, they deliberately dragged out the time to wait for Dream Chaser to be ready. So what the hell are they doing? And if they're not ready, would we bet that it's due to the lack of BE-4 engines, which wouldn't be their fault? Vulcan was originally supposed to be done in 2021, but that kept getting delayed due to BE-4 issues. The delay to the BE-4, which is pretty common to Blue Origin's rocket development, but why did not ULA consider a backup plan for this issue? And it's still not clear if BO is building them at a fast enough rate to supply both Vulcan and New Glenn. Assume if there are engine issues, that doesn't change the terms of the contract ULA signed with the Department of Defense, DOD. They might be able to get something from Blue Origin if the engine contract allows them to recover those fines. One more weird tidbit. As they got closer to launch, it turned out that ULA had never bothered to do a pressure test on their Flight Centaur upper stage, and they blew one apart, which caused further delay. 
I don't understand why a company with a reputation as the USE's most experienced spacecraft launch company is so clumsy in critical projects. So how about you? Do you think Blue Origin and Sierra Space contributed much to ULA's crisis this time? Say yes if you agree. Anyway, if you find this useful, please give us a share, like, and subscribe. Your support will be a huge motivation for us to release more quality videos in the future. And now, let's come back. Okay, to answer those questions, let's listen to an amazing opinion that I have already collected while browsing on social media. According to his comment, the NSSL contracts are between ULA and the government, not between Sierra and the government. So the government finds ULA. It's unfortunate that they didn't write something into the Dream Chaser contract that would penalize Sierra for driving penalties to ULA from other customers. At this point, I wish NASA could write something in Boeing's contract under the Commercial Crew Program. The subject of the thread is that Vulcan's not ready to meet the contract obligations ULA worked so hard to secure. It's not like Dream Chaser is the only thing that Vulcan can launch. The bottom line is that DOD is holding ULA responsible for not being ready to deliver on their required timelines, whether it's Sierra's fault, Centaur's fault, Blue's fault, COVID's fault, or nobody's fault is irrelevant. All they care about is having a certified rocket under their payload when they deliver it to the pad. Should they hold Sierra responsible or Blue Origin for not delivering their BE-4 engines two years ago, or themselves for blowing up a Centaur 5 in testing last year about this time, or Astrobotics for delaying Peregrine delivery until January. The Dream Chaser delay is not the only problem, just the latest in a long series of setbacks since it happened to be the next available payload after everything else held the launch up for over two years from its originally planned maiden launch in 2022. Because it was all their choices that got them here, they chose BE-4 engines rather than Raptors, they chose laser welding rather than inductance welding on Centaur 5, and they selected Peregrine and Dream Chaser as their test payloads while they were still in development. The Air Force wrote penalties into their contract, but ULA didn't write any into theirs with Blue, Astrobotics, or Sierra, or have any plan B in their pocket if anything went sideways, as everything did. In particular, if they had written the contract right, ULA would own Blue Origin over the BE-4 fiasco rather than Blue, allegedly, planning to buy ULA after breaking them. Regardless of the current problems, United Launch Alliance stays confident to compete with SpaceX for NSSL Phase 3, a multi-billion dollar procurement of launch services projected for 2025 through 2029. The proof is that on May 17, Tori Bruno, CEO of ULA, shared an image comparing Vulcan with SpaceX rockets. He wrote, Vulcan is a high-energy orbit architecture that separates its first stage in LAO. Although did not mention it directly, possibly this is like a challenge that he sent to his opponent. Of course, to overcome a powerful rival such as SpaceX, they should first put their money where their mouth is, and this is exactly what they are bad at. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.